first. It takes about five seconds before it starts working. All right. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is Robert Stone. Can everybody hear me? Good, getting a lot of yeses here. Excited to be here tonight. This is the hottest thing on the internet right now. If you guys don't realize that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to turn you over to Holly. You ready, Holly? Yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> hey, guys. Uh, again, my throat is, <clears throat> my voice is uh, having some issues. So if I mute it for a couple seconds, it's just because I'm clearing in my voice and I don't want to cough in your guys' ears. Um, so we have some new attendees today. Um, we just did a webinar, and um, there's some new people that came in the course. So um, I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, thank you for helping everyone who has been answering questions and, you know, continue to do that. That's a great atmosphere for everybody to learn. Um, can you guys see my screen? No, you can't. Um, Tony, can you give me a presentation? Or Robert, I don't know if you can. Let's see if this works. There you go. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, dude. You're welcome. Robert, he's my support guy. So um, you go to Facebook, add Robert Stone. He's in the um, Facebook groups. If you can't, been, if you haven't been added yet, just give me some time after the webinar. Robert's going to help me add you guys in there. Um, it it might be slow going, so just give me a few minutes. If you know, if we haven't been added in then about like an hour, send me a message, and we'll get you taken care of. Um, okay, so this this some training is on PBNs, and we're gonna go over how I use PBNs. Everyone uses PBNs in their own way. Everyone has different metrics that they go over. I um, I am a P PA person, I look at the page authority first. So I have a, a criteria. So I look at page authority, and then I look at domain authority, and then I look at the MOZ rank, and then I look at, hey, Robert, you want to mute, mute yourself, please? And then I look at the PR. And the reason that I go in this order is because Page authority to me is what makes things rank. When I'm doing link, when I'm doing linking, I want to have, you know, high page authority on my blogs, on my PBNs. I can have a, a PA of a 60, but a PR of a zero, and it doesn't matter to me because I under, I know that Google is going to show authority to that site because it has a PA of 60. So, in in the long about way, you know, you can look at PR. Um, I, you know, it's just, it's just, I look at PA thir at first. I used to be a, a network owner and I had um, primary, pri primarily PR sites and didn't really look at PA, but once I did some experimenting with rankings, then I realized I needed to go to the PA section. And really, page authority is the 2014 way of ranking. PR is a little bit old school. It's not bad, but for me, I want to be ranking stuff, you know, instantly, three weeks times, four weeks times. So I'm a, I'm a big PA third person. I build my own PA. I understand how it works. So keep that in mind. And the training that you'll understand, that's the metrics. Um, <clears throat> I had to clear my throat. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go over basically my metrics in, in different places that I find it. So one of the first things I'm going to start with is expired domains. Expireddomains.net is a free website. All you have to do is, is register <clears throat> for the site and log in. Um, and log in. As far as I know, it's, it's free. They might have changed it, but I don't think so. So <clears throat> what I look at is deleted expired domains. I don't look at auctions because 
I know I can build up the domain to how I want it. So I'll pick a drop domain, and I don't care how many times it's dropped because it, it to me, is a backlink. It's not a money site that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to rank it. So to me, it does not it doesn't matter that five people owned it. To me, it matters the the page authority. Okay, so we click on deleted.com. Um, and then click on Show Filter, and we want to do only new ones the last 24 hours. I don't want any fake PRs. Okay, now we click on Additional Filters. I want it only avail <clears throat> only available domains. And then I click on AdWords SEO filter. And my page authority, the very minimum that I'm gonna look at is thirty. Okay, for Mazrik, the very minimum I'm going to look at is, well, I do a 2.5 sometimes, so we'll do 2. Um, I don't care about the subdomain. The domain authority, um, I'll, I'll put 20. We'll see what that brings in. But, you know, primarily, this is what I'm worried about is the page authority. Okay? Um, let me make sure there's nothing else that I need. All right, and then... apply filter. Okay, and then I go to SPA and I click it once. And now these sites now, this like this site right here is a PA30, or a PA60. The next site's a PA50 and down. So this one looks actually, it's a pretty good MOS rate, 4.71, which is strong. The Domain authority is 40 and the PA is 49. So let's go look at what that domain looks like. And I use Ahrefs. So I put the domain in and click search links. <clears throat> so this has 20,000 backlinks. <clears throat> and it has 20,000 to follow links. My guess is that someone used this as a PBN previously. But let's check what the anchors look like. Yeah, so this is a spam domain. Um, if you're just starting off, <clears throat> if you're just starting off with PBNs, I wouldn't suggest getting something like this. If you're an advanced person and you understand how to use the PBNs, I would buy this. I would make it into a video blog, and I would make sure that I have nothing that is pharmaceutical on there. Um, this kind of domain does not scare me at all. It's probably penalized for for a pharmaceutical type, but I just won't put pharmaceutical on there. You know, I might even buy this and direct it at a second tier. I would direct it at my Web 2.0 network just to make that network stronger. <clears throat> so let's let's go look at another one. Let's see what that one is. It's it looks like a spammy domain, but let's find. So that one that's all to follow. That's probably a spammy domain too. So this isn't too bad. I mean it's psychics. Psychics, you know. That was not too bad. I would probably buy that one, may do the same thing. Um, I would probably direct it at like a lead generation web 2.0. Um, I'm sorry, a lead generation um, video site or something like that. That's not that bad of a domain. Um, look at this one. This is how I actually found a... Uh, oh, I don't know. 
Oh, I am. No, I'm not. This is how I found a landscaping website that was like 12 years old. And the landscaping company just like accidentally did not notice that their um, domain was expired. I bought it uh, and they called me back. They actually got my registry somehow and they called me and said, you know, hey, can we buy it? We didn't realize it. And I just like, yeah, you guys can buy it. I just, you know, it was 12 bucks. Um, so this is, you know, this is kind of how, this is basically how I do it. Um, I look at the .nets, the .orgs, the .infos, the .biz, the .mobies, um, the, .c, the .us, the .tv, and I think it's the .c, CO, as long as I, I think the CA, I have to be in uh, Canada, I don't remember. I think the COs, I don't. So that's basically, you know, this is one easy way of getting domains. Now, you know, probably 98% of these are probably spammed. Look at, let's look at the .NET ones. <clears throat> Uh, blogcomics.net, let's look at that one. So 235, it's probably spammed also. So this one's pretty good. It looks like a blogging one previously. Um, Castaway Blogger, you know, I, I look at the anchors. This one is, you know, this one I would definitely buy and use it as a PBN network. I would, you know, I, I do video PBNs, so I, I don't do article PBNs. Um, I'll tell you guys in a little while why I don't. But so this would be just used as a video PBN. Um, so that's, that's basically what I do for, for buying... Um, for buying my PBNs for $12. Um, so it's page authority of 30, domain authority of domain authority of 20, and Moz rank of 2. So if we change something to like a Moz rank of 1, domain authority of 10, and Moz of 10, apply filter, and we'll go other way. So we got 15 PA 14. <laughs> These ones are probably like legitimate type sites, you would think. <laughs> Some of them are at least. Um, so I mean, if, if those other ones scare you because they look too spammy, change your um, PA and your DA, and you can, and and that way you can buy those, and then you just would pop it into um, GSA and run the template one, and you know run it for a month. It'll gain probably it'd be up to a PA forty maybe, and a DA of 30, 30 to thirty five, and the Moz rank of maybe three. So that's that's another way you can do it, is buy lower PA and just build it up. Uh, another way, easy way to do it, go. Go to Namecheap.com, just type in some domains that you want. You know, like I had a health network of, you know, like I had acid reflux and I had snoring and I had um, acne. I had 50 different ailments that were related to health. And I just bought them <clears throat> brand new in Namecheap and I put them in, in GSA for a couple months and I, I got them to like PA 60s and DA 50s, it was a Moz rank of like six. They're really super strong. I sold the health network for like $70,000 to another, um, I mean, you have to find investors for that, obviously. But, you know, I sold it to a, a big health affiliate guy. And, you know, he uses it for a PBN. So that's, that's a way you can do this too, just to keep, you know, Go outside of the box, build PBNs, build domains, sell them to brokers, you know, go on websites and sell them like that too. You have to be careful um, on your anchor text, but that's a way to do it. Okay, so um, 
Robert, you put that site in there? Yeah, you did. Okay, so that's yes, expired domain, so we're going to close that one out. Okay, thanks. Um, another site that is a pretty new site um, is called pvnfinder.com. Um, a fellow marketer actually made this, and I'm not like super familiar with it, let me say, so you might find some different ways to use it, or if I like screw something up, that would be why. Okay, so um, TF and MIA and CF, so TF means trust flow and CF means citation flow. Um, trust flow basically means um, it's a trusted site from Google. <clears throat> um, I don't I don't pay attention to TF. It's a majestic um, metric. It doesn't. I know some people who buy PBNs will look at the trust flow. So um, that's TF. CF means citation flow. If you have a high citation flow in majestic, like in the 40s or something, that means that that site is spammed to hell. Don't let that scare you. You can still buy it. You just have to know how to use it. If it's if it's a spammy website like pharmaceuticals, if it's um, a sexual type site, if it's a dating site, if it's a casino site, you can still buy it, but you need to direct it at your Web 2.0 um, tier. So you remember last night we were talking about our castle. So you went direct it at your castle because that's your money site. You would direct it at your tier one, which is your Web 2.0. So you control the links going to it. It's spammy, yeah, but you don't have a penalty on it. The penalty is that you don't want to have a casino. I mean, like if you bought a casino site that was dropped, chances are it's dropped because it has a penalty. That's fine. So you still can use it. You just put like anchor links that are about TV shows. You put anchor links that are about, um, you know, AC Miami. Anything that is not casino related. And it's going to work fine. If you put it casino related, 90% of the chance it's not going to work. So remember that when you're looking at them. <clears throat> okay. Um, so this site is kind of, kind of neat. So, um, I actually tried to pay for the site before the webinar, and it was giving me some errors. I don't think that it's it's totally working yet, but when it uh, is, when it's going to be working, it's going to be good because it's going to tell you the website. I mean, this filter, and you can tell you the website, and just at a glance, it's going to tell you. Like this one's pretty good. It's a PA32 with a CF of seven. That's what you want to see. If you're going to be particular and you um, you follow people like Derek and um, I mean, Derek's the only guy I know who does Web 2.0 teaching. I don't know anyone else who does it. So if you follow Derek, you know, your CF probably should be below 20 if you're going to do his teaching. If you're going to follow what I'm telling you to do, I don't worry about CF. So you can't, like, interlink. I mean, you can somewhat, but you got to be, careful about your spamming your domains. Okay. Um, so, you know, just take a look at that site. It's a, it's a, it's a good site. Um, I think you get them for $12 because they're drop sites. So you can just go to Namecheap, I'm guessing, and just type that in and try to register it. Because I don't think he owns these. Okay, so um, that's that site. There's also sites like um, Fresh Drop. Fresh Drop, I think it's like $34 a month. And there's another site, um, and I can't think of what the site is. Um, Robert, do you, do you by chance know what the site is? Somebody does in the, in, the, in the question box. What's the site that Derek uses? It's Fresh Drop and... <sighs> Hey, Robert, is anyone saying it? I can't, I can't Somebody remember. said something about Register Compass. Yeah, it was Register Compass. Um. <clears throat> so 
So if you wanted to go sign up, let's see how much it is. Oh, really, it's not going to tell me the price. Don't they have membership prices? I think it's like $40 a month. Most things are 40 bucks a month, so we'll just say 40 bucks a month. <clears throat> so register Compass, do you want to put that in the um, chat box? And then Fresh Drop. Yes, I'll put that in there. Okay. Freshdrop.com. Yeah, this was my go-to site um, until I found expired domains because I can filter it out and I would always do registration fee first because I want to get my domains for $12. So if you use this domain or this um, website, click on the registration fee first because those are the ones that you really want. Um, name chat. Namejet is like an auction site. So what you do there is you um, find the domain you want, and your minimum bid is $69. You don't have to bid more than that. Just bid your $69. That $69 means um, in three days, or that $69 means that you get into the next private um, auction, and then there's an auction for three days. So. Your first bid is $69, it gets you into the private auction, and then that's where you really do your big bidding. Don't do your big bidding like outside of there because people are going to know then what your main cost is going to be. Um, and GoDaddy, you know, they have different, different types of auctions. And, it, I mean, if you're going to do GoDaddy, you better have some kind of like automated software because someone's going to come up right under you and bid you out. So keep that in mind if you're doing GoDaddy. Um, <clears throat> Snap and DinoDot, I never tried DinoDot, and I don't think that's how you say it. Um, I would think it does the same thing as Namejet, um, and I'm pretty sure Snap does too, so you guys can just like mess around with that. Just make sure you do your metrics at page authority of <clears throat> 30, domain authority of at least 20, and Moz rank, I go between 2.5 and 3. So I will sometimes like look at the other ones, but that's really my lowest amount that I'll go to. So if I find something that is PA60 but a DA of 10, I'm not going to buy it. Even if I can build it up, I'm not going to buy it because I, I stick very, you know, I need to have my PA and my DA very similar. Even if I can build it up, I'm, I'm probably not going to waste the time unless I really, really like the domain, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, does anyone have any like questions about that part, just those areas? Robert, we're good? Okay, yeah, we're good. I have a lot of questions, okay. but uh, not pertaining to just those areas. Okay. I just want to make sure everyone followed me on that half. Okay, so you're all probably like wondering what Holly does, right? Okay, so um, I did the PBN network, you know, about two to three years ago. I had a thousand um, PR6s. Well, no, I had a thousand network, and it was like 400 PR6s, 100 PR5s, 100 PR4s, you know, etc. And Hey, um, Robert, you want to mute yourself, please? And um, <coughs> I I did the one IP per website. I did, I hired an article on iWriter. I was each, each of them were a unique article related to the topic that I was doing the backlink on. Um, I had Indian Nets, so I had one IP per site. I had, um, I blocked like um, Google Access. It was HTA Access or whatever it's called. <clears throat> um, you can use like it's the same thing as like Spider Spanker. Basically, it's the same thing. Um, I did that. Um, I mean, I did everything that like they tell you to do how to make a PBN, and I lost them all. And I lost them all in one day in a matter of seconds. And <clears throat> 
the reason, my opinion is the reason why I lost them is because that network, that network was amazingly powerful. I had, um, I had tw that was another thing. I only had like 15 to 20 outbound links on each site, and I didn't have a footprint. One was not linking to another. So this PBN did not had five links. This PBN had 10 links, but those five and those 10 never connected. So they were always different links on every single site. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the problem was that I know that people say Google doesn't pay attention to you, but if you give them a reason to pay attention to you, they're going to. And in this case, it was ranking for nationwide insurance terms. It was ranking for nationwide SEO services. It was ranking for nationwide dating services. Um, so in, in my opinion, Google took notice to me, and I got a, a review, and they took them all down. <clears throat> So, I don't do own domains anymore because I lost 30,000, like, over, I mean, it was in seconds that I lost 30,000, and I had to refund people besides the fact that I lost those domains, too. So, my monthly income was not a monthly income anymore. <clears throat> and that's when I switched to doing Web 2.0 domains. And so now, this is where I, I bring in my rank quiz. That, you know, I mean, I have my anchor links and my, my in-band network. But I also have a blog network, too. So it's, you know, like my blog orders and my pest control networks and my web networks. So I use them all in different ways, but they're all a video network. I have you know, five sentences, I have my first sentence, I have my video embed, I have three sentences, and then I have my web 2.0. So I'll show you, um, I'll show you what one of them looks like. <clears throat> and and I, I do this simply because if I lose this, it, it's not a big deal because I have 100,000 of them. So who cares if I lose it? <clears throat> See, it's, it's, here's my one sentence, here's my embed, here's my two, three sentences, and there's the anchor text. <clears throat> and there's for the next one. And then, you know, some might put the YouTube video on in there. I don't link out to authority sites. Um, you know, this is like, this was a client of mine, um, so he had more content he wanted me to do. It, it ranks for how to fix a web basement is number three. Um, So this this is really how I do my networks because because I you know I'm so scared that I'm gonna I'm so scared that what happens if I have hundred thousand private domains again and I and I even do it the way that they tell you to do it and I still lose it so I don't I really don't like an own network anymore but I know that if I would do a private network again I would do it in this particular way that I'm going to tell you. So I wouldn't do um, one network per domain anymore. Because if you think about it, if Google, if, if a Google person, a review person, is going to come look at your website and they look, you know, at your IP, they're going to say, huh, there's one website on this IP. Uh, ding, ding, that's a PBN. That's going to go down. You have to think about how Google is going to think. Even if it's an allegor, it doesn't matter. I still think about what Google is going to think about and how they're going to perceive it. So if they go to my, if they go to my site, it's a Web 2.0 site. Who cares? It's a video blog. Google loves videos right now. So why wouldn't I make it a video blog? Because that is giving power. So that's what I would do. I would make a Web 2.0, or I would make a private domain network <coughs> of video blogs. So I would have shared hosting. Something like um I I I use Hostnet. Or I'm sorry, I use Host9. I'll bring that up quick. <clears throat> and I use Host9 because um if I go to scripts and tools and uh my migration manager um 
if I don't like the IP that it's on because of whatever reason is sharing or something, um, I can change the IP, I can migrate it, and it's going to give me a different IP. Um, I don't know how many IPs they have. I mean, I, I think I can get like 35 IPs, probably more. I don't know. I mean, in reality, you want to do a shared hosting. Shared hosting can have like 25 sites to 100 sites. I don't even know. But it's going to look more like a legitimate type of a site. It's, it's, Google's not going to question it because it's on shared hosting. Um, Host9 also has different servers, like you can do it in the U.S. There's a European one. <clears throat> um, I don't know if, let me see, if I create an account if it tells me. Okay, yeah, location. So you can do um, the U.S., Central, West, East, Singapore, Amsterdam, or the U.K. So that's really why I like Host9 is because I have a little bit more control, and it's still shared. So I won't, I you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be on that one IP. You know, I know people say to to do one IP, but it, it didn't save me, so I will never do it again. Um, the second thing is that um, what I would do different is I would not hire a writer again. I mean, the articles were phenomenal; they were good. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't save my network. Uh, so I would not spend the money to do it. What I would do is the same thing I do with my Web 2.0s. I put a sentence, I put it in bed. You can, you can get a WordPress um, theme and put a, your, you, your um, embed in there and put a couple sentences. Um, and then you can put, put a bring back up, a couple sentences and put your anchor text and then put you know, you can put your YouTube video. Really, you should always put your YouTube video link like that anyways, because it, it helps it bring it up. So I would copy exactly what I do for the Web 2.0 network onto the private network. Um, another thing I would not do is Spider Spanker. Not because it's a good program, because it is a good program, but um, as an example, Alex Becker uses um, Spider Spanker. <laughs> and I was on one of his webinars, and, you know, I want to find people's links because that's the kind of person that I am. I like to look at people's backlinks and try to figure out what they're doing. So he said I couldn't find his backlinks. I'm like, well, don't say I can't do something because it's probably I'm going to do it now. So I went in, <clears throat> and if you go, I'll tell you how to, I'll tell you how to find people's backlinks. It's, it's ridiculously easy. <laughs> you go to Google. And you type in <coughs> Google HK, which is Hong Kong. <coughs> okay. So if you're trying to find people's PBNs, you just type in their um, money site <coughs> and Google search it. And the reason why it works is because for whatever reason, Google Hong Kong is not like blocked on Spider Spanker or in, in most places. You just go to a different country, a different country's um, Google, and it works. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's kind of a secret of a day. Um, I don't want to go into more about it because some people probably aren't going to be mad that I showed you that trick, or they're going to be mad, not happy with me. Um, but you know, you can use Spider Spanker at your own risk. Um, Another people, another thing that was put in the Facebook group for questions was how do you not have so many footprints? Well, here's the thing with that. I'm not scared of having footprints, and in my opinion, you're, you're never not going to have footprints. Like, you're going to have footprints because you're doing an embed web 2.0 network. But I don't care about that because... I'm not worried about someone finding my links because I know that I'm a better SEO person than them. So they can find my links. They can do the same links as I'm doing, but they're not going to kick me off because I'm a better SEO person and because I have my I have my my castle so covered that if someone tried to come in and try to take me out, 
they're not going to be able to bump it off because it's so strong going out. My money site is so strong going out. It's just not going to happen. I mean, I guess it like could happen, but I'll just come back up. I'm not like worried about it. So the footprint thing, <clears throat> I'm guessing spider spanker if you really want to. I mean, I can't, <clears throat> I can't think of, I can't think of any other fail safe thing to use for uh, footprints. You know, like don't have all the websites connect to each other would be one thing. It didn't help me before, so use that at your own risk. That's why I'm, ta I'm saying, that's why I do the, um, the video network because it's working. Don't, don't fix what's, what's, you know, it's working. I'm not going to change it. Okay, so um, I think that I covered how I set up my Web 2.0s in my, um, my Rank Wiz video. I would do the exact same thing if you're going to do a PDN. And the cool thing about Rank Wiz, actually, is, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, that's not it. You can do self-hosted in um, Rank Wiz. So if you if you do have a bunch of blogs, but you're like logging in separately or using like um, a project manager or something, you can actually have RankWiz post to your PBNs to your um, WordPress. Um, if you give me like a minute, let me. I think it's. Uh, let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> so we'll go to. We'll go to T blog. It's probably in your submissions. Well, I don't have any submissions in there. I gotta find my submission one. Oh, can't get broke broke ring quiz. Oh, I didn't. Oh, good. Okay, let's see. We'll go there. Click on options, is it there? Okay, so that's where it would be. Um, it would be in the self-hosted option, so you can put your category and your tags. Um, there used to be, like, because I think you have to have an author. Um, what I'll do for you guys is I'm going to talk to Pavlo. He'll direct me on how to make it post to your guys' PBN if that's something you're interested in. Um, I'll do like a 10-minute video <clears throat> of how you do it, and then I'll put it on the site. I know it does it, but I haven't ever done it on here, so I'm not sure exactly where to go. I think it's in your options, but I don't want to steer you wrong. <clears throat> so, okay, so then I covered the, the RankWiz Web 2.0s and the Host9. So if you guys want to get hosting, definitely get Host9. You know, if you don't like Host9, get something like HostGator. And I know everyone hates Host HostGator. They have downtime. But in the end, you know, it's it's a big company, and I can call and get immediate support. So that's why I, I stick with them. You know, GoDaddy might be a good one, too, because they're a big company. But, you know, I can send Host9 a, a support ticket, and they'll get, me, they'll get back to me within the hour. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go over a trick that um, I showed in a previous webinar that we didn't release. Um, it's how to also, if you don't want to like use expired domains or uh, fresh drop or, or register compass, it's a nifty way of um, finding a lot of domains and chances are they're not spammed. Okay, so it's a process. Okay, so um, 
you go on to, you know, wherever your scrape box is. And remember, we're scraping for GSA targets. And you can use the GSA target file, you know, from Scrapebox or Gscraper in more than one way. So, you know, the first way you're going to use it is to see if it's postable. So this is the second way. So you click on import URL list and you import the list that you were scraping. You know, if it's, it um, doesn't even matter what platform, if it's like trackbacks or if it's like social media, uh, blog comments, whatever, it doesn't matter at all what kind of platform it is. <clears throat> it takes a couple minutes. Okay, so there's 779 URLs in here. First thing you do is trim to root. <clears throat> Okay. Second thing, remove filter duplicate domains. You don't want any duplicate domains in there. So it removed 198,000. My dog is going to bark, I think, just one sec. He is. <laughs> okay. Um, so now there's 581,000 in there. So now you click on add-ons. And if you remember me talking about the live checker, this is where I use it to scrape box the live checker. And you click on load URLs from Harvester. Harvester is where that 581,000 links were. And then you click on start. It's checking if it's dead or if it's alive. I'm going to let it run for like a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see it's checking what domains are alive and what domains are dead. <laughs> All right, so we're going to abort it. You get the gist of that, basically. <clears throat> All right, you click OK. You click down here. When it's all done, you click down there and save dead to your hard drive and name it dead blogs one. Okay. All you're all saved, so you can close that out now. Yes. Okay. So then I would copy dead blogs one over to my desktop, which I can see I already have. It's called dead blogs. I open it up. I have 155,000 domains that Scraybox is saying is dead. Now, realize some of the times it's wrong, but that's just something that is <laughs> something you have to deal with. It's not like 100,000 are going to be active in generally. So, okay, so now we need to take out HTTP. Wait a minute. No, we don't. Not yet. <clears throat> All right. So now... We copy over maybe like for this example, I'm going to do, I don't want any of those in there. Okay, just one sec. All right. We're just going to pick some and 
We're going to copy it. And now I'm going to go to the site. It's uh, seorankSmart.com slash tools slash page domain authority. <laughs> I put them all in there. All right. Robert, I'm going to put this um, URL in. If you could please send it out. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so now what it's doing is that that list that I put in there, it checked all the DA and the PA, basically. Okay, so that's what that did. So I'm going to go over to the one that I did earlier. Um, also, if you notice, that actually says you can only put 10 URLs in a time. I do like 20,000, and I don't get kicked out. So, I mean, you can do like 5,000. You can do as many as you want to do. I've never tried over 20, though. Okay. So now I copy, um, I copy everything that is in there, and I copy it into a spreadsheet, and I right-click, remove hyperlinks, I remove column A, because that's just the number of um, the number it was on the site, and then I highlight columns A, B, and C. Click on filter, custom sort, sort by column B because column B is PA, and largest to smallest, and then click OK. So now you have domains that could be available with very high PA, and chances are, good chances are that it's not spammed because these are domains that have been dropped for, you know, a variety of reasons. Um, all right, so now, you know, we'll just, we'll take 400. Oh, you can't take 400 because GoDaddy only allows, I don't know, let's go see how many allows. <coughs> it says 500. Okay, let's put 400 in there. Um, remove all. I was doing it earlier. Okay, so the bulk registration is where you go to. I can't do that. You got to go to um, your notepad. This is where you take out the HTTP. So, so you just copy that. Control H, find HTTP, replace it with nothing. There you go. Now you copy and paste that out, put it in GoDaddy click on go. Now it's seeing if what I can register. <clears throat> so out of all of those, I can only register two. So this is why you need to put in all of your scrape lists because that one had 150,000, I think it said. Out of the 150,000, um, you might come across a big batch that you can um, um, register. In the first video that we did it, I came across 20 of them that I could register. They were all, like, not spammed. Um, let's just take a look at these two. That RU one is obviously spammed. It's, it's uh, Russian. Oh my goodness, 204,000. Look at that, 188,000. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's a spammer. That's nice. Um, so I have no idea what the guy was actually, hey, I don't know what he's trying to rank for. I mean, these are some pretty generic terms. He might have had it forwarded at 301 at somebody else for I 
don't know if he was trying to penalize it or something. Um, if I'm worried that a site is penalty, you know, I still will buy it. I'll just, you know, like I said, I'll put, I'll make sure I don't put the same content on it. But for this one, the anchor texts are all over the place. So I probably wouldn't actually buy this one because I don't, I don't know if it has a penalty on it. Uh, and I wouldn't even know what it had a penalty on it. So that's not a good one to buy. But um, I think you get the idea. I mean, that's why I save all my lists that I scrape for, because eventually I'm going to come across, like, several hundred of them that, I, that I'm able to register for or that I'm able to, like, say, hey, to my client, you know, do you want these domains? I'll register for them for 50 bucks. You can buy them. I'm not going to tell them I'm going to register them for $12, but I'm going to see if I can get, like, 75, 50 to $75 you know, and he can buy them for me. He can put his own content on it. Um, so that's kind of um, a neat little trick on finding domains, too. Um, let me, I think, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to go over for the PBNs. Um, I'm sure that we have questions. So, Robert, you want to ask, um, have some questions? Sure, Holly. Yes, we have a lot of questions here. Uh, and Janet Bruno is asking, how do you interpret all the Chinese and foreign links? Um, so the Chinese and the foreign ones, you can't really, but I buy them and I still use them as a second tier network. I send them to my web 2.0s, not my locals and not my um, my money sites. I still buy them. I like the Chinese. I love the Chinese domains because they are very, very strong. So, you know, I buy them, um, but I use them as tiers. Jordan Catron is asking, uh, .ca is Canada, yes? I think .ca is Canada. .co is like a different extension, but I don't think it's Canada. How do you tell if a domain was used for spam? For spam? Yes. Is that what you said? Um, you put it in um, ahrefs, and obviously that one had 204,000, and the do follows was like 90%. So if you're trying to figure out if it's spammed, first thing is you look at your do follow versus your no follow. It should be um, seven. If, if, if it's not spammed, and not used for that. It should really be something like 60% um, no follow, 40% do follow. Your anchor links should be something like, like I found that landscaping one, it all had ones that were related to landscaping. So, you know, if it's pharmaceutical or something like that, you know it was used as a spamming site. Scott Rogers is asking, can you run them in GSA, meaning Web 2.0s, without installing a site. Yeah, I mean, I um, I recently, um, you know, all of those 6,500 blogs that I just recently bought, I um, I put them all into GSA. Um, even on PBNs, like own domains PBNs, you don't even have to have an index to get page authority on it. So you can just pop them in GSA and build it up. It doesn't have to be indexed. It doesn't matter. It's Moz is a different metric than Google is. PA is Moz, so it doesn't matter if it's indexed because it's um, how you get a page authority is that um, Moz's bots follow your links. Basically, it's a linking system. So the better links, the more links you have, the more page authority you're going to have. And then you have to get it indexed, which, you know, use my indexer, the incredible indexer. It'll get it indexed. Norbert is asking, uh, can you recommend sites where we can send these domains to brokers? Um, so um, for brokers, I mean, you can obviously use the ones like Digital Point or, 
yeah, Digital Point, and you can go on there and find brokers. Um, you can sell them also at like places like um, SourceWave. I know SourceWave because I used to sell them on there. Um, you can sell it at NHB if you're in Project X. Um, you can sell it. I mean, if you, I mean, you can make your own site. Like my my Web 2.0 sites that I sell. I just made a real simple site and then um, I just started posting it on forums. So go to like some SEO forums and just make some forum posts and you're going to get sales. Can you discuss PA versus DA? Um, really, it's page authority versus domain authority. Page authority is where your link is on your link is on the page domain authority means the whole web